Good evening and welcome to the Rick Steves Tours Festival of Europe. My name is Julianne Worden and I will be your moderator this evening as we travel along to Sicily and South Italy with our guides Rick Steves and Tommaso Ponte. And now it is my pleasure to introduce one of our guides for this evening, Sir Rick Steves. Hi Rick. Julianne. It's nice to be with you and it's nice to be with lots of other travelers as we celebrate our love of Europe and every night we're going to a different destination and today it is Sicily and Sicily is one of the great surprises in Europe. So thank you so much for joining us and um, I'm just going to uh, remind you that we've still got, oh I don't know, until January 30th every night at six o'clock to share with you some great travels and there's plenty of seats open every night. You know, for 20 or 30 years, we were inviting people to Seattle uh, to celebrate their memories and get together with their travel partners. And we'd fly in our guides from Europe and we'd have a grand festival. It was our annual alumni party. And we had six massive parties over the course of the weekend to accommodate all the people who came to Seattle. And then of course, with COVID, we had to stop that. Uh, and now we're coming out of COVID and we had a great year last year. And instead of flying everybody into Seattle, we're having a virtual party and it's 22 nights in a row. We get together and we dream about travel. And uh, we used to fly our guides in and we had a series of lectures called Test Drive a Tour Guide. And we're doing Test Drive a Tour Guide this month. And tonight we're gonna meet one of our favorite Italian guides, Tommaso Pante, coming up in a moment. But we wanna remind you, of course we're selling tours, but we're also just inspiring and equipping people to enjoy their travels by providing you information. This next hour is gonna be packed with practical ideas on how you can travel through Sicily. And of course, if you wanna grab a guidebook, we know a good one that can help you in Sicily. And this guidebook is designed so you can do our tours without us. When you take the tour, you get the guidebook so you can be a on the ball independent traveler taking advantage of the guide and the bus and the hotels and all the efficiency that comes with an organized tour. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you want to have that independence and that challenge and that wonderful experience like so many of us do, grab a book. You don't need to tab it as enthusiastically as this traveler, but use that book and turn your travel dreams into smooth and affordable reality. I want to remind you, we've got an amazing staff of co-authors and researchers and editors in our book department with our wonderful publisher, Avalon, and our guidebooks are just jamming. We're like 15 out of the top 20 now in Europe, and uh, we're just very proud of that. We work very hard on our guidebooks because we think it's important that people have good information. Our philosophy is if you equip yourself with good information and expect yourself to travel smart, you will. All right. One thing we don't want is boring travel. There's, you know, a lot of people go to Europe and um, frankly, they have boring trips. They have bland travel. We don't want bland travel, whether you're going on a tour or whether you're going on your own. We are a gang of guides that knows how to make Europe fun. And that's really important. I want to remind you, it's an exciting time for me as we kick off 2023 because I've got a grandson. My daughter, Jackie, gave birth to Atlas. She named that beautiful baby Atlas, and that is just an inspiration for all of us to be thankful that we can travel. And when I look at darling Atlas's, ha, his beautiful face as I get to hold that bundle of joy, I think how blessed we are to have this child and also how important it is that we make our world a place that is livable and travelable in the next generation. I'm saying this because we are all travelers and we are all co contributing to climate change and we can mitigate the carbon we create. So we are putting together a very important talk on Monday, that's in two days. And uh, our COO, Craig Davidson, is just so inspiring about how travelers can mitigate their carbon and then they can travel with the peace of mind of knowing that they are carbon neutral in their flights. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about ethical travels. That's right here. It's a very important um, special um, event of this festival because there's some ethical responsibilities, I would say, that come with travel, especially these days. If you're curious about that, and if you're curious about what we're doing at our company, Rick Steves Europe, please put that on your calendar Monday, this time in 48 hours. Tomorrow we're going to Turkey, and you can see by that list all the places we're going until the end of the month, and you can also see every place we've been. If you're just tuning in, I want to remind you all these special events 
are available anytime for free. If you just go to ricksteves.com, look into the travel festival section and then click and you can travel with us. Remember, every Monday we're giving away a tour. Somebody's going to win a tour and every family gets one entry every week. If you entered last week and you want to enter again this week, it's very straightforward. And uh, every Monday we'll announce it. We had a winner last Monday and we're going to have a winner next Monday and we're going to have a winner the month, two winners the Monday after that. You will get in about 24 hours an email follow up to this event and it will explain to you all the ins and outs with links to everything we're talking about tonight. One thing that's very easy to remember, and everybody gets to be a winner in this regard, if you're going to sign up for a tour between now and the end of the month, you get $100 off because you're part of this festival. Just use the promotional code. I reminded you we have this book on Sicily. Everything that Tommaso and I are going to be talking about in the next hour is in this book and lots, lots more. This book really is your key to Sicily, to plan your trip in advance, to do it on your own. If you take our tour, you will get this book included in the tour because this is your, well, information is power. This makes you powerful as a traveler when you've got a very important vacation in Sicily. This is our spaghetti map. And if you look at that, the spaghetti is thickest in Italy. We have 40 different itineraries at Rick Steves Europe. And what we're gonna be doing right now is that what looks to me like the southernmost itinerary out of all those 40, uh, we're gonna be Sicily. And we're also gonna take a quick look at our Southern Italy uh, trip that hooks around from Rome uh, through the south of Italy to Naples. So thanks for joining us. Remember, most people do the core of Italy. This is one of our best-selling tours here, the best of Italy in 17 days. And we have three or four or five different iterations of this region here. When you've done the core of Italy and the north of Italy and you want more, hey, go further south. This is our best of South Italy tour in 13 days. Tommaso and I will be talking about this uh, in the last 10 minutes or so of this presentation. And this is what Tommaso and I are gonna be talking about in uh, just a moment. This is the best 11 days in Sicily. And in order for us to enjoy that right now in a way that is, I think, a lot of fun, I'm gonna invite Tommaso to join me right now. Tommaso, thanks for being with us. Buonasera, buonasera a tutti. Good evening and nice to be with you, of course, and uh, to uh, introduce uh, to uh, all of uh, our, you know, uh, our two members, you know, Sicily and the beauty of this island, because uh, Sicily for sure is the most exotic uh, place of Europe, the most exotic place of, uh, of Italy. It's, uh, it's a place full of history, uh, great food, great people, uh, great monuments. It's really, uh, it's really on the top, uh, you know, of uh, of our list. You know, I'm Sicilian, so nah. everything is Sicilian. You know, for me, it's I the like best. it. I, I was just thinking, Tommaso, you're sounding like a proud Sicilian, and it is yes. so nice for us to have a Sicilian like you on our staff to make sure this itinerary is just the best. And uh, right now, um, how long have you been guiding tours with us, Tommaso? Oh uh, yes, it's a long time already. It's uh, my first tour with you was uh, uh, in 2005. 2005. Uh, yeah, a long goodness. time ago. <laughs> how, how does the how do the years go by? I'm going to have to drink a little bit of a limoncello so I can toast to your great tour guiding. <laughs> and I'm limoncello. <laughs> and what are you drink? Oh, by the way, you're not in Italy right now. You are in Argentina. Is that right? Yes, I'm in Argentina. I'm toasting you with beautiful Malbec wine. There yes, I'm in, in Mendoza right now. So beautiful Malbec, a, beautiful, a delicious limoncello for you. Cheers. Salute. 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 Oh. oh, man. This takes me to Sorrento. <laughs> exactly. We are going to Sorrento on our, you know, on our screen, uh, on our slideshow. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, isn't it, when you take a, a sip of something that you uh, you associate with where you were traveling. I've, I've really, of all this limoncello I've drunk in my life, I think 90% of it has been in southern Italy or Sicily. And um, But if I drink it here, um, it takes me right back. Tell me um, very briefly about limoncello. No. Uh, you know, but limoncello is, uh, is, I mean, uh, limoncello is the most important liquor that we produce in the southern part of Italy, and especially in the Sorrento area in the Amalfi Coast. It's very simple to prepare. I mean, you just need lemons, the good one, of course. Uh, you need water, you need grain alcohol and sugar. This, these are the four, uh, the four main ingredients. Mm. You know, in the southern part of Italy, I tell you, we make limoncello at home. 
In general, we make limoncello, our mamas make limoncello, and they give us a present for Christmas to all the friends that they come and visit us. So it's a very good present, you know, very well appreciated. I love it when friends bring over homemade um, jam or drinks or cookies or whatever. And um, in Italy, so many people are have a sideline where they're just for the love of beautiful culture and edible, you know, uh, uh, slices of their heritage, brewing and cooking and baking and, and fermenting and whatever, all sorts of treats. And they share them, don't they? That's true. That's true for us. You know, uh, convivial. These are the convivial moment. In general, yeah. you know, we don't bring flowers. We bring food, you know, you come to Sicily, you go in mama's house that invite you during the weekend, you bring cannolis, you don't bring flowers, <laughs> huh? because already <laughs> mama has a lot of flowers, you don't bring wine, <laughs> because we already have wine, so mama prefers cannolis. Well, <laughs> all right, well, you're going to bring us a lot of travel joy here in the next few minutes, so I'm going to just uh, uh, welcome you to all of the people who are joining us here tonight, and um uh, Tommaso, when we look at the best 11 days in Italy, uh, we fly into Palermo and uh, we finish in Catania in the big airport. There's two big airports, one in Palermo and one over here by Syracuse in Catania, right? Right. Yes. These are the two most important airports in Sicily. We have a minor airports, other minor airports, but these are really the two most important. Actually, I want to tell you, Catania, in terms of number of passengers, is the third most important airport of all Italy. Roma is the first, the second yeah. is Milano, the third one is Catania. This I would have never I would have never guessed that. Okay, I'm going to go quickly through this and then we're going to let you tell us some stories as we travel, but we're going to start in Palermo and spend two nights there and then side trip to Montreal. We'll show you that great uh, Romanesque church in a moment. Uh, the uh, great Greek temple in Segesta, over to Trepani and Arice on the far uh, west of the island down to Agrigento, which is the great, arguably the greatest collection of Greek temples anywhere, including in Greece from, from the ancient world. And then an old Roman, uh, a 1500 year old, 1600 year old Roman villa that is wallpapered or, or paved in beautiful mosaics. Then we go down to Syracuse, the, the one of the, the Catania, Syracuse and Palermo are the leading cities on the island up to the volcano Mount Etna, over to the famous resort Taromina, and then finishing in Catania. Now we're going to do that right now. And when we take, uh, I, I had the great joy of taking one of our uh, Sicily tours just a few years ago. I had so much fun. I went back with our TV crew and we made uh, two TV shows on Sicily and we could fill an hour with that. I want to remind people everything we're talking about. If you're dreaming about the, the, the uh, Sicily itinerary, the itinerary, the two TV shows basically cover everything we do on the two on the 13 day tour. Hey, uh, Tommaso, when you look at this, um, a Sicilian woman on her back uh, balcony, what do you recognize here? What do you see? Well, well, what I see is simple. Remember, Sicily is the island of the sanction, you know, is the island where for 345 days in one year we have the sun. So we don't use any, you know, dryer at home. Actually, this is really the um, this is the shame of the family if you have a driver at home. So where we drive our, you know, our clothes in the balcony. Yeah. So this why, is, uh, yeah. Why not? It's air dried, it's fresh, it's nice. And a beautiful thing about Sicily is both the people and the food. We're going to talk a lot about the food in a moment. And what I remember on my tour, this man was on our tour and he stumbled into a, 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 wait, a waiter at the restaurant and it was like he found his brother. And I don't think they were related, except he had Sicilian heritage and he was with his people. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that is Ignazio. Actually, Ignazio is to the right inside of the photo. And uh, in Piazza Armerina, we are here. They, they look exactly the same. Really, I don't know if genetically speaking, they are related. They may be. Huh? Well, they're both <laughs> Sicilians, I think. But you actually know yeah. that. I forget which is which. Which one is the guy who is uh, in the restaurant in Sicily? To, to the right. To the right. right. Ignazio. Ignazio, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... I just thought that was such a cool thing. And so many Americans have Italian heritage. And, and, um, and everybody, when they go to Sicily, will kind of feel like they're with family. I just love the life in the street. Uh, there's just everywhere you turn, there's activity. People are, there's something about that. You mentioned that word convivial and you've got the sunshine and you've got this desire to get out. And when the sun goes down, when it's cooler, uh, when you look at this, what, what do you see? Oh, well, I see the joy of living, the joy of living outside. 
you know, in Sicily, we have small apartments after all. We use our apartments just to prepare our food, you know, lunch, dinner, yeah. and then yeah. most of the day is spent outside because the days are so beautiful. And, and again, a socialize, you know, meet in the square, have yeah. a nice glass of wine. This yeah. is what I think when I see this photo taken in Palermo at the Bucheria this market. You know that I was I for, I didn't I honestly didn't know where this was, but it was reminding me of going to the market when the market was finished after dinner. I took a little walk from the hotel. I love the market. I stumbled into the same couple of blocks where the market sprawls. The market was all gone, but there was more action after dinner there, uh, and it was just a festival. And what was the festival? Just another night in a yeah. System. Yeah. Every single night of the day is <laughs> like that. I mean, we have no exception. You go in summer, you go in winter, you always see this kind of joyful faces, you know, in the market everywhere. You've and this is our flag. Tell me about that flag, Tommaso. That we are proud about this flag because you know what? This is the oldest flag of Europe. 1282 is was showed, you know? And wow. again, uh, the three legs represent uh, the, the, the triangular shape of the island because this is a Greek symbol. So the Greeks already knew the geography of the island. Uh, they knew that the Sicily was triangular. So the three legs, the, the three poles. Okay. And then we have the Medusa face, and then we have wheat. But when we, when, when we fly our guides in for our alumni parties in the past, you know, um, you're, part, you're one region of Italy. What are there, 20 regions in Italy, like states? 20, yeah. But uh, only the, the, the guides from Sicily want their own flag. The rest of the Italians will take the Italian flag. That's right. We are very proud of it. I'll never forget. We were in such a good mood and we were in, uh, uh, where that was, that was Syracuse. Yeah, on the rooftop. Uh, we came to our hotel and I just thought, we got to go up on the rooftop of the hotel and just a cheap bottle of table wine and the, the Mediterranean all around and, and the, the sun still warming on our face. It was just a beautiful get together. There's so much magic to be had. Our group starts in Palermo and I love the city of Palermo. And I really like where we start our, our tours because we're on, there's a, like a rooftop terrace for our breakfast, isn't there? Exactly. This is our rooftop for breakfast. This is where we are going to have our first night meeting. And look at the view. The view is amazing. You can see all Palermo from there. You can see all the domes of the church. We have mm -hmm. many churches in town. And this is where we're going to meet the first night. And this is what you're going to see, what we're going to see every single morning for breakfast. Uh, this is the best. The you know, best. and when I look at this, I look at the beauty of a hotel anywhere you travel that's in the town in the center because i know here i can step out and be right with the action i'm not at a you know like on a freeway off ramp i'm right in the middle of all the fun and when you wander around palermo you really have an indication of the importance of this uh, of this city through the ages really uh, there's uh, when you when you think about sicily there's many layers because of the many invasions tell us a little bit about that Ah, 16 or 17 different civilizations. This is Sicily. I mean, even during the prehistorical time, we had a population in Sicily, you know, uh, yeah. but then the history, the Greeks, and then the Romans, and then after the Romans, we had the barbarians, and then the Byzantine, and then after the Byzantine, Sicily was Muslim, Sicily was Arabic. You know, the Muslim uh, was a very important domination we had here in Sicily. And then we had the Normans, the Normans, I mean, that we had up in the northern part of Europe in England, mm -hmm. they also came to Sicily. It's amazing, you know. It, if and, you look at Sicily, you can see it's it's an island right in the middle. It's like saying, trample on me. You know, there's so much yeah. going by in Sicily up until, well, through the ages, it's had, and that contributes to a multifaceted culture and heritage and cuisine. And one of my favorite things about Sicily is going into the markets and you can, you can taste and smell all of the history. Uh, and when we're, oh, I guess, first of all, I just, my favorite markets, maybe in all of Europe, are in Sicily. Tell us about the markets that we'll see in Palermo. This is the market of Ballarò. This is where we go, uh, you know, for our, for our, during our walk. And this is a great place uh, also to taste, uh, to taste our food. I mean, it's very inexpensive. I mean, you can eat for $10, you know, a beautiful, delicious meal fish, I mean, vegetables, a lot of vegetables. Sometimes, you know, we get surprised to see 25 artichokes for five euros. Wow. You wow. Know, <laughs> and I, bet, I bet when that happens, 
the, for me, there's a soundtrack, there's a music. It's like a bunch of crazy opera singers that are just selling food. And yeah. uh, if you're going to have 20, what was it, 25 artichokes for five euros? And I would say, uh, and I would be going, bolito, bolito, bolito. Bol <laughs> that's the octopus, uh, or that's the cow feet <laughs> that they sell with the lemon uh, juice. I can hear the man now. He's selling every part of the cow. He's selling the nose. He's selling the ears. He's selling the feet. It's all boiled. Bolito. Everything. We eat everything. I mean, it's uh, it's incredible. Now, it's a very crusty city when you walk around the outside. And one thing I love about Europe is you never know what's inside because of the outside. Very rough and very, you know, kind of it's got the patina of age. But inside you find these palaces. And one thing I really love about Sicily is how you and your colleagues have found so many great places to share. And I'll never forget meeting the Contessa. Tell us about the Contessa. She is so gracious. You know, it's a great introduction to Sicily because uh, this is uh, one of the first visits we do. So, I mean, when you scratch the surface, really, this is what you see. Beautiful palazzi, gracious women that really want to show you how they live. This is a living palazzo. This is a palazzo where the Contessa Alvine Federico, she lives with, uh, you know, the husband, with Alessandro. Now, if I remember, and, she's from Austria, but she married the Count, who's like a nobleman. And now she helps run the beautiful house and they welcome tourists to come in. And I think it's part of the reality of nobility today. They can be land rich, but cash poor. And they have a big right. house to keep up. So, you know, basically she's making money. She's very charming. We pay her and she lets us come into her house. She shows us around. We eat there and we get to meet the count, the count who has his own sort of noble man cave. I got to go in there and he's he's got all these he's he's a car racer. He's got all these exotic fast cars and everything. A very wealthy nobleman in Sicily would you'd expect to have in his little den. Yes, yes. Actually, you know, the nobility is still important. The aristocracy is still important in Sicily. Having a title means that you are you are a very important you are a very important person. Yeah. And actually, the family Federico is one of the most prestigious because mm. they are directly descendant from uh, Frederick II. You know, the Swabian in the wow. 12th century, yeah. Stupor Mundi, the wonder of the world. So you know, they're beautiful people. When we were there uh, with her, we were there with our television camera. And uh, and she invited all her friends over. She's in a choir and they just sang for us like angels. And it was a, just a celebration of high culture in a crazy city outside of Palermo, just into the mountains away is a town called Monreal. And there's an amazing uh, a church there, a basilica. And uh, this is from the Romanesque age. This is before Gothic. So this would be eight or nine hundred years old. And when you look at the uh, uh, gold leaf and the beautiful mosaics and all of the meaning there, it really is an exquisite experience, isn't it, for architecture and, and medieval art? Absolutely, it is. Actually, you know, remember that the um, Arab Norman monuments of Palermo, Monreale, and Cefalu, they were uh, incorporated in the UNESCO World Heritage list. This is a very important list. And, you know, this is really a gem. This cathedral is something that uh, when uh, all uh, when our guests they go inside, they really uh, they really are stunned because of the golden leaves mosaic, because of the history of the Bible that we have there, of the gospel, each scene, you know, each figure tell us something, you know, uh, it's it's really something amazing. If you think that this church is original since uh, uh, one thousand, I mean, 900 years, it's really something amazing. Oh, it's right. so beautiful. And all, all, the, all of a sudden I'm thinking right now about why I'm so enthusiastic about tours. You know, I write these guidebooks so people don't need a tour. That's everything's in here. You can do it. But I love the thought that when you take a tour, if it's a good tour, whether it's our tour or some other tour, you'll have the great experiences all lined up. You'll go to the market at the right time. You'll know who to meet in the market. You'll know what the singing means. You'll go to the Contessa's place. You'll meet the Count. And then the bus will be waiting for you and it'll zip you right up into the mountains to go to this village and you will see the church and you'll understand the art because your guide will explain it to you. And you might do that on your way out of town and your next stop would be Trepani. You do it with, you do it effortlessly with no stress. Somebody else is doing the driving. You drive for a couple hours, and where do we what, tell us about Trapani? Uh, Trapani is the most western point of the island of Sicily. 
uh, well, Trapani had a big change after 2007 because the America's Cup, a part of the America's Cup took place in this, in this town. And there was really a big improvement. It's a beautiful town, very, I mean, it's a beautiful town. A lot of uh, uh, great experiences, actually, the cable car, because from Erice, you, we go down by cable car. And this is actually the village, the medieval village of Erice, full of history, also this. Uh, but what is really important about Erice, this is my hero. She is wow. my hero. I love Maria... Signora Grammatico. I'll yes. never forget <laughs> my time with her. Oh, baby. Yeah. Tell she us about is... her. Mm. Yes, I mean, Maria Grammatico, you know, she's uh, the master of the almond cookies and the pastries in Sicily. The best almond cookies, uh, the best cannoli are made by Signora Maria Grammatico. Uh, you know, it's it's incredible that uh, at that age, she still has uh, the same enthusiasm. Absolutely. You know, and, and she hosted us again with our TV camera and we came by. And I, I know from my experience with our tour group when I took the tour, each year I try to sign up on a tour uh, just as a participant. I sign up with a with a pseudonym, a false name, and I just surprise the group and I just am part of the part, part of the feast. It's just so much fun. And I remember my impression of Sicily with the group was the food. We just couldn't get over the food. And when Signora Grammatico, who is a gourmet chef along with a pastry chef, she puts out all of the, the quintessential dishes here and you could not get a better uh, Sicilian lunch buffet than this. Tell us uh, here what we're eating, Tommaso. Yeah, we're eating, we're eating a mix of food that is uh, uh, typical of the Western part of Sicily. But, you know, some of these ingredients you can find everywhere. So we have, for instance, the frittata, that is a kind of Spanish tortilla, but is made in Sicily, of course. The eggplant parmigiana down to the right, you know, layers of um, layers of eggplants, uh, tomato, and uh, and then we have the rice balls, uh, the arancini, you know, the rice balls, the deep fried rice balls. Then we have uh, the caprese salad. Uh, well, that is uh, really delicious. So look, in my opinion, what we say in Sicily actually is a uh, simple is the best. So we use a uh, simple ingredients that we can find everywhere in our market. And mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, and that is really the best food experience. And this is what we do. And then we drive to near Marsala, uh, where there's a bay there. And the bay is just such a dramatic and beautiful place. And it reminds us salt was a big deal historically. And this place was important because of white gold. What was the salt mining? What, what was going on and why? Yes, yeah, so sea salt has always been produced in this area since the 8th to the 7th century before Christ. So we're talking about 2,700 years. I mean, mm. the sea salt has always been important because remember, the word salarium comes from salt. So the Romans, they paid, you know, they soldiers with salt because salt was the main way of conservation yeah. of food. So salt has always been important in this area. And actually, you know, this was produced also during the Carthaginian time, Carthaginians. And this is where we go, Mozia. Mozia is one of the most important uh, uh, Carthaginian settlements. You know, Carthaginians, uh, this is the art tracts that we can find uh, in the uh, Museum of Mozart. It's a little, little museum, a small collection, but so, so beautiful. It's absolutely out, uh, outstanding, you know, you to know, see. Car Carthage was a, a powerful city on the north coast of Africa, right? In right, in times. Tunisia. In Tunisia. in Tunisia. And we've heard of Carthage and we've heard of the Carthaginians. Uh, and... Uh, it was, I, I think it was such a hedonistic place that in biblical times, if somebody wanted to get a dirty weekend away, they'd go to Carthage. And if somebody was not having a good time, somebody would say, well, we can't all go to Carthage. But yeah. uh, I've never encountered anything about Carthage in Europe except here on Mozia. And it was so interesting to learn about that slice of the many faceted history of uh, Sicily that goes back, as you said, 2,700 years or more. I always like to remind people that 500 years before Christ, Southern Italy, including Sicily, was called Magna Grecia. That's Greater Greece. It's a, it was a colony of Greece. And the architecture, the, the ancient Greek temples in Italy, and we'll see some south of Naples, and here on Sicily are just stupendo, and they're beautifully preserved. And uh, we'll, we'll go to Segesta, and of course you'll have your theater and your, th and your uh, temple, but the great place 
for for ancient Greek temples, I think, is Agrigento. And Tommaso, if I remember correctly, it's like a ridge, and there's a whole line of temples along this ridge. And if you looked at it from sea, it would just be quite awe-inspiring. I mean, wow, what a what a mecca for Greek, uh, you know, pagan religion. And uh, tell us about the temples that we'll find in Agrigento. Yes, it's the we call actually uh, the Valley of the Temples. It's not okay. really a valley, but you will start to walk from the first temple, which is the Temple of Era, and then we see the Temple of the Concordia, which was the previous one, you know, and that is uh, the, one of the most well-preserved temple, you know, of the, uh, of the Greek uh, uh, of the Greek archaeology, 5th century, 6th century BC, mm. the only part missing is just the rooftop, uh. because the rest of the temple is there, standing. You know, uh, Tommaso, I just did my art series. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it or hear about it, yes. but it's six hours of art history. And uh, a lot of uh, half of one whole episode is on ancient Greece. And thank goodness for Magna Grecia. Thank goodness from my camera point of view that there is Greek ruins in Italy because they were great examples of Greek temples uh, in Paestum, south of Naples, and of course here in Agrigento. So we had a great time filming with all of the wonders from ancient Greece. And I was particularly struck by this fallen statue of a kind of a giant. What are we looking at here? This is a massive character. This is called the Telamon. And you know, this was built, this was basically holding, you know, part of the rooftop at the column of a great temple that was located, the Temple of Zeus, uh, that was located, uh, is the last temple on the Valley of the Temple. So imagine the dimension. If already one small portion of the temple has this dimension, imagine the rest of the temple, how big it was. It's amazing. <laughs> In the museum, they have a, a rebuilding of it, I think. And um, right. and these guys are standing kind of like this, like caryatids, like yeah. we see a, 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 a figure of a human being holding up the roof. And there's a there's a, a whole bunch of them. And to walk in that site, it's just mind blowing. And then as if we're still reeling from ancient Greece, we get a little dose of ancient Rome. Also, when we go to Villa Romana del Casale, what is this? The Villa Romana di Casale has one of the most exquisite and beautiful uh, roof, uh, I mean, mm, floor mosaics of the uh, ancient Roman time. I mean, we don't have any better than this. Uh, you know, uh, the, this mosaic, the quality of these mosaics is really exquisite. If you think that this villa was built on the 4th century AD, 1600, 500, 600 years ago, and the mosaic is still there, you really get amazed. You know, it Look was the, it was buried, I think, in a landslide, and that exactly. was a that was a bad day for the the rich guy that owned this palace. But you know, uh, fifteen hundred years later, when they would excavate it, they'd go, "Thank God for that landslide," because the that's the quirky reason why the mosaic floor is beautifully preserved. And I swear, this guy was really into ostentatious uh, show off wealth because every room was was. Uh, paved was carpeted with this mosaic and today all us visitors we walk through on elevated walkways and with our guide when you're there you can explain all, what each of these things meant because it wasn't just decoration it came with a message and it also celebrated uh, early athletes didn't it yes look at this these are the 10 ladies in bikini this is the symbol when we promote the roman villa del casale everywhere in the world this is what we put look how uh, look how evoluted were the Romans. They already represented women, you know, in bikini, which is really amazing. I mean, 1,600 yeah. years ago, women in bikini, a genonic, yeah. actually. They're not really skinny. They are yeah. really, I mean, with good shapes. <laughs> and then we carry on and we get to Syracuse. And the old part of Syracuse, the uh, out on the peninsula or the island there, is Ortigia. And that is an amazing place. I remember going there 20 years ago and it was kind of dark and scary and there was nothing happening, but it just looked menacing and, and dangerous. Today, there's no hint of that, is there? You know, Sicily did have a reputation of being a little bit, well, poor and dangerous and riddled with corruption and crime. Uh, tell us just briefly about that, because I think a lot of people are still thinking uh, organized crime or the mafia and so on. Uh, what is the reality today for a traveler and for a Sicilian like you? No, absolutely. Sicily changed a lot. A lot of improvements have been done in Sicily. 
I mean, you, I mean, just, uh, I mean, when you come to Sicily, I know most of the, uh, most of the visitors, they go to Sicily a little bit intimidated, you know, yeah. oh, mamma mia, I mean, Palermo is dangerous, you know, the mafia, the pickpockets, you know, 27 years I'm living tour of Sicily, I never, ever experienced one pickpocket in the island. Now, Only wait one. a minute. 27 <laughs> years you've been leading groups and you've never experienced with your groups one pickpocket. And if there is a thief, their most exciting target is a group of American tourists. No, come on. No, no but no. that point is there. No, I mean, I know the pickpockets will target the Americans up in Rome. But yes. what I'm saying is, in Sicily, that's a remarkable statement. And uh, nobody could say that about Barcelona. Nobody could say that about Paris, you know? So I, I know you're being polite, but I'm just kind of looking at statistics here. Uh, the point is that we want to drive home. Sicily, there's nothing to worry about in Sicily compared to any other place. No, it's fluent, it's, it's well organized, and the people are just lovely. And you can go to a puppet show. This is what we do. We go to a puppet show and we see in Syracuse, we assist. I mean, we see this beautiful uh, story of Orlando. Uh, I mean, these are the Chansons de Roland. So basically the French, you know, novels uh, that were represented in a modern way. Uh, look, each puppet of this is handmade. You know, it's nice. handmade. The skeleton is in wood. At the metal part, you know, they take months to, you know, made one of these puppets. It's, it's really beautiful. a piece of art. It's a piece and, of and art. And this is just around the corner from this amazing church on this amazing square. There's just so much to enjoy. But we got to move on because we're trying to see the best of Sicily in 13 days. And I think the number one resort on Sicily is Taromina. And um, I, I think when, um, I think when, when White Lotus pr uh, shows off uh, Terramina, a lot of it is set there, I understand. They make it seem like it's on the water, but it's up on a cliff above the water and you got to take a, a, a cable car down to get to the water. Terramina to me is famous for its amazing ancient Greek theater with what's got to be the most grand view of any theater I've ever been in. And also it's just terrace and everybody just enjoying the moment. If ever you were going to enjoy a, a passeggiata, in uh, Sicily, this is a, an elegant one, I would think, isn't it? It is elegant, and especially with this great view of Mount Etna, of the volcano of the background, you know, mm. we have a glorious sunset, glorious wow. sunset from this square. Look, Look at, at that. This. And that you've got the steaming, the menacing Mount Etna. Many times, I've not many times, but two or three times, I've got to say, I've been in uh, Sicily when there's a light dusting of ash everywhere. The cars on the windows, they have a little bit of dust on it. And it's because Etna is erupt or Et Etna is putting smoke up into the air and then it's cleaned off. And but we can go up there and we can go actually to the rim of the volcano. Tell us what we would do, what you would do with a group when it comes to visiting. Yes, we Etna. got yes, we go to the elevation of six six thousand feet, uh, Crateri Silvestri. And we stop the bus, I mean the parking lot there. And this is the crater that we walk all together around. It's one of the 200 craters. We have a two or more hundred, 200 or more craters, you know, up uh, on this wow. volcano. It's an active volcano. It's one yeah. of the most active volcano we have yeah. in Europe. The ground is hot. I mean, you feel the ground is hot. Yes. I went up there one time, a way back in my, in my youth, and we went up to the top. And I don't know if you remember this, but there were guys with big metal forks sticking into the flowing molten lava picking out a red dripping wad of it, putting it into a mold, and it would dry and cool and make an ashtray. Yes, right. An ashtray yes. out of the lava from, from, I think I've got that somewhere in, in the garage, you know, my, my Sicily ashtray. But this is a live volcano, that's the point. Yeah, it is, it is one of the most active volcanoes. And the, the bonus of that is beautiful black soil, which makes beautiful wine. Tell us about the Banatti family. Yes, this is what we visit on the slopes of Mount Etna. You know, we have many wineries, but for sure, Benanti, the winery where we're going uh, in terms of quality of the wine is one of the top, absolutely. And here we can see one of the twin brothers. I don't know if it's Antonio or Salvino because they look exactly the same. I cannot uh, tell, but I sure they were both charming and welcoming and proud yeah. of their family heritage. And the, the tour of the vineyard was wonderful. And then the real kicker was we got to see their massive grape press, 
you know, and then sit down and enjoy beautiful matched food with the family wine. And uh, the boys were there explaining and meeting us. And it is quite a good education and a beautiful lunch, isn't it? Absolutely, it is. Actually, we have a lunch in a beautiful art gallery because, you know, one, uh, I mean, the father of the Benanti is an art collector. It's beautiful paintings on this room. Huh? It's, yeah. it's really something unbelievable. And these are the moments. These are the experiences. Everybody knows to see this and that on the checklist, you know, but, but to, to visit with this family and to visit with the Contessa, you know, the, the, and, and to know the guy in the market that's, uh, that's, you know, selling this or that. That's what our guides bring to these tours that I'm just so proud of. Uh, Catania is uh, one of the three big cities in uh, Sicily. And Catania, I was very struck by the museum there that talks about the Allied invasion of Italy uh, that led to the end of World War II. Uh, and there's a great museum there. And, and I was struck by this guidebook because I write guidebooks. This is a, in English, a soldier's guide to Sicily given to the American GIs that landed in Sicily and battled heroically their way through Sicily up the Italian peninsula and eventually freed Italy from Nazi tyranny. That's right. There was a very important operation. It was in 1943, this uh, Operation Husky. Let's say from a you know, strategical point of view, I mean, the liberation of Europe began from there, began mm -hmm. from exactly from this, uh, from this part of the world. 39 days, Sicily was conquered. So mm. the war was over a little bit earlier than the rest of Italy. Mm. There is a beautiful museum where we can see uniforms, where we can see the propaganda of Mussolini. So the mm. books that were given to the ch children mm. in the primary school, it's, it's truly a, an educational moment for all mm. of us. Oh, it's so powerful to be able to go to that museum. I'm so thankful we go there. Have you ever heard of a movie called something like Four Days in Naples? Yeah, ah, yes, I have seen it. It's, and that tells about the, 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 uh, the reality of being in Naples okay. as that war was sweeping through. And it's well okay. worth seeing. It was filmed in, uh, it was produced in 1962, I think. It's, it's a yes. black and white uh, do, uh, movie, and it's just a dramatic look at, you don't think about Italy in World War II very often, and it was quite a thrilling story. Uh, well, when we're looking around Catania, we'll also find ourselves in the market. This must be one of the greatest markets in, in all of Italy, Catania. Especially in terms of fish. The oh. fish market of Catania, you know, fish in our diet is one of the most important food. We are an island, don't forget. So fish, you know, can be found everywhere. And the fish market of Catania, for sure, is one of the, uh, of the best in terms of fishing that we have in Italy. Every single day, every single morning, you know, you go there and you find the fresh catch of the day. Mm -hmm. This is where our mama go every single day to buy. I love it when you talk <laughs> about your mama. You've got some of your mama's recipes, don't you, on your website? Yes, yes, because, you know, I always have the question, but Tommaso, we want a recipe of this, we want a recipe of that. You know what? My mama, you know, she's a great <laughs> cook. <laughs> and I posted all the recipes of the, of the food that we're eating in Sicily on my website. My mama recipes. My you mama, my mama. Food, yeah. Oh, my mom. I've heard so many great chefs, great cooks, great uh, uh, connoisseurs of fine restaurants. And not everything is measured uh, according to how great my mama's food was. You know, there's a real uh, uh, respect for that. And uh, I want to remind everybody, you will get a link to Tommaso's um, website in the email that is the follow up for this gathering. So you can go to his website and uh, check out the work that Tommaso does on his own. Uh, you're available as a guide alone and you've got your art, right? You're right, exactly. I'm a free, uh, yes, I'm a tour art. guide, uh, local I mean, tour your, guide. And your insights into the culture, like with the menus. And uh, boy, there's a lot to know about the food. And one thing I'm just struck by is just how exuberant and enthusiastic people are about going to that market. What are we seeing here, Tommaso? Uh, we're seeing the pasta la norma. Oh, wow, I'm missing it. You know, in Argentina, meat, 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 and then uh, pasta is the one that I'm missing. And this uh, specific recipe, again, is very simple. We just use uh, three ingredients, eggplants, uh, tomato sauce, and basil with some baked ricotta cheese on top. This is actually a pasta that is very common in the eastern part of Sicily, in the area of Catania. Uh, because La Norma, La Norma from Vincenzo Bellini, remember Vincenzo Bellini uh, was a composer, he was born in Catania, so in honor 
of Vincenzo Bellini and the Norma, you know, opera, uh, we created these nice. special pastas. Nice. You know, I have to remind people that just this week we have re, uh, released our Italy for Food Lovers book. Tommaso, I do not think you've seen this book. Uh, no. Cameron on our staff worked with Fred Plotkin and they put this together. This is an amazing book. And I think one of the most important chapters is Sicily. I, I know Fred is really into Sicilian food and you can get all of the uh, insights into Italian food. So you can go to Sicily and know what your options are and what you're gonna be eating uh, if you check out the, uh, the brand new Rick Steves Italy for Food Lovers book. Uh, what are we looking at here, Tommaso? Oh, we're looking at the beautiful fish couscous. This mm. is another important dish that we prepare, especially on the western part of the island. So in the area of Trapani, Erice, ah. uh, because, you know, the Arab influence, the Arab mm. influence is very important. Every year in a small village of uh, the western part of Sicily, we have the International Couscous Festival in Sicily. So <laughs> in it's Sicily, couscous. It's a reminder yeah. of that many faceted heritage. And yes. we have some sweets. Oh, we do have sweet. Actually, here we have a delicious granita, granita with brioche. The brioche is a kind of sweet bread that we dip inside the granita. You know what? In summer, this is our breakfast in the morning. Ah. <laughs> we, we don't have a scrambled eggs, you know. That is we so Italian. That is so Italian. It's yeah. uh, la dolce vita right from the time you wake up. Oh, yeah. this is it. Let me just let me just fantasize for a minute. I want to be yes. there. <laughs> There's nothing, you know, Tommaso, I've had so many, frankly, bad cannolis all around the world. When people, you must, when you travel and you find somebody that doesn't know cannoli and they sell something that looks like this and it's called cannoli, you must know, stay away because you're spoiled. You've had cannolis in their birthplace. Exactly. I mean, buy a cannolo only when it's filled right in front of you. Yeah. Don't buy a cannoli that is there because, you know, it's not crunchy. And, you know, ricotta is a very uh, delicate cheese. We need to eat ricotta fresh. So the one of my one of my one of my treasured memories when I was in Sicily, I, we got to a great uh, in his town. He was the man for cannoli, you know, and uh, I got to actually put on the put on the apron and fill the, the cones with the ricotta and for the camera, because I was doing some on camera about the, the beautiful food. And uh, it was so delicious. And I'll tell you, you haven't had cannoli unless you've had it right. Exactly. Yes. I mean, we have a, at the Mazepan, a look at the almond paste made with this beautiful shape of fruit. They look like real fruit. But they look like is, real fruit. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a Mazepan. There's no fruit in there. It's just sugar. No. Okay. Hey, now we're going to go to the best of South Italy. So we just spent 13 days around Sicily. This is jumping off from Rome and going south instead of north. I would say 10% of the people jumping off from Rome go south and 90% go north. And uh, I know a lot of people, they get down to Rome and, you know, some people for them, that's enough. Italy is a pretty, pretty rich brew. And OK, I've, I've seen Italy uh, and it was a little bit chaotic for them, a little bit intense and a little bit crazy. Uh, other people, they love it, you know, and they want more. I would say if you love Italy as the time you get down to Rome, go further south because it gets better. Italy just intensifies as you plunge deeper south. And here, with the help of our local guides like Tommaso, we've put together a beautiful 13-day itinerary. It starts in Rome, and it's sort of designed to uh, complement the Rome that we do with our basic tours. So if you've taken a basic tour and you take this, you get an, a sort of an offbeat look at Rome. You're staying on the other side of the river. And then we leave Rome and we stop in Tivoli, outside of town. And that is where Emperor Hadrian built his villa. And I'll tell you, many, several times when I need a big park filled with great Roman ruin and uh, frames for a TV show, I go to Tivoli and every hundred yards, there's something beautiful to use as a, as a backdrop when I'm talking to the camera. I did that. I spent a whole day there when we were doing our art show, just so I had places to stand up that looked good and made a point. And then we drive all the way to the East Coast, the Gargano Peninsula, Albrobello, Matera, and then we swing down to the area around Naples. And you'll see six out of the 13 days, um, uh, six are in that Naples area. 
We do the Greek ruins in Paestum. We do the Romantic Amalfi Coast. We do Lemoncello Town, the resort town south of Naples, uh, Sorrento. And we finish with a finale in Naples. And now I'm going to let Tommaso kind of take us on this route. Are you ready, Tommaso? I am ready, totally. All right. <laughs> Tell us what we're going to see on 13 days, the best of South Italy on a Rick Steves tour. So we start from Rome, but we don't see the usual Rome. You know, we see the unusual Rome because we're staying in Trastevere. Trastevere, you know, it was a neighbor that in the past was a kind of poor neighbor, but today is the most popular, the most intense, the most vibrant. This is where we have the nightlife, the restaurants. We stay right there, you know. And so people it's, know Trastevere is like Ultra Arno. It's the yes. other side of the river. The, exactly. the Tiber River, across the Tiber River. In the old days, that's where the, the misfits, the uh, people that didn't want to pay taxes, the people that were had the strange religions, all the, 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 the non-conformist, all the interesting people, all the character uh, was outside of town in the, we would say the wrong side of the tracks in our hemisphere. But of course, the rivers were the avenue for all the trade. And that's the wrong side of the river in Rome, Trastevere. And then we go into the major attractions as well, don't we? Yes, exactly. We go to visit the Capitoline Museum, uh, which is located in one of the seven hills of Rome. Actually, you know, this is the city hall behind. And we have the horse. And next to the, to the right, we have this important, important museum. Actually, the statue of... Um, of the wolf of Rome with Romolo and Remo, remember, you know, Remo actually passed away and Romolo was the founder of the city. Wait a minute, so Remo passed away. Didn't Romo kill Remo? Killed. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> sugarcoating the history there, my friend. So, right. So Rome killed Remus. Like, exactly. like, like Cain and Abel. <laughs> right, the two brothers. And actually, if it was a Remo that survived, you know, to the two, probably Rome would be called the Rema today, not Rome. <laughs> so glad well, that in that we... case, I'm glad Rome killed Rema instead of Rema <laughs> killing Rome, because we got <laughs> Rome now instead of Rema. <laughs> and exactly. And then we visit also uh, the Sistine Chapel. Of course, uh, the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel is one of the highlights, you know, uh, in, uh, in Rome. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, in general, it's crowded, but we have really, uh, we have a really a smooth visit in general, I would say. It's not really so stressful. So you know, with our guides, with the help of the local guides, everything is smooth in Rome. I got to say, I was just with our, our Roman guide, Francesca, a month ago when we had our guide training tour in Rome. And uh, she was taking me and 20 new guides around and we were learning how we make a Rick Steves tour. And uh, I was so impressed by the things that Francesca did with us. And she kept saying, we do this on our South Italy tour. And there's a beautiful cohesiveness in how we cover Rome for people who are on the South Italy tour. And I'm very proud of that and thankful for the work you guys are doing. On our way out of town, we go to Hadrian's Villa that I mentioned. Yes. And this is just an example of, you know, Hadrian had a rich man's hobby of rebuilding his favorite buildings that he saw in his travels back at home in his villa. And you walk around that villa and it's like you're walking around all of Hadrian's favorite sites that he saw. And he just told us, guys, build something like that on my villa. But then we get into uncharted territory for most travelers and tell us about what we're going to encounter between here and Naples. Uh, yes, yes, yes. This is in the Adriatic, in the Adriatic coast. Actually, is it was a small fisherman village in the past, but now is is a pretty very well known, especially among Italians. You know, many Italians in summer they go on vacation there. Look at the blue color of the ocean the, of the. Adriatic Sea is, is fantastic. And actually, the Este is very beautiful, especially the boat ride. We do a boat ride along the coast and we see many, many caves. So yeah. this is really uh, beautiful stuff. And then Albero Bello, you know, the truly corn houses that, again, this was incorporated in the UNESCO. World Heritage List. Uh, this was the poor material that the local people had available. So this is the reason why these truly cones are made with stones. 
and basically, uh, you know, were uh, houses for farmers. But today we have a beautiful restaurants, a beautiful uh, uh, shopping area, beautiful hotels in the in the Trulli. So once again, uh, uh, Trulli is very mysterious but very beautiful because most of these Trullis today are completely restored. We moved to Matera. Matera was the shame of Italy until 1950s. Today I would say is the, the gem. Is the really the beautiful place where you know uh, many movies were filmed uh, the passion of christ you know mel gibson was yeah. filmed there in so the it era. was the shame of italy and in, in, in the 50s why yeah because most of the people you know in those years they were living in the into caves uh, with no toilets no bad no bathrooms yeah. no 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 you wow. know no running water so the condition of living and the mortality was very high we're talking about 1950s i mean yesterday yeah and then and naples was a little bit the same way when i first came to naples it was a crazy place now it's it's good crazy i would say you know naples is quite a success story in my mind uh, it's incredible because you know naples actually uh, was at the capital of the southern part of italy until before the unification before 1861 i mean uh, the kingdom of naples uh, the kingdom of to sicily naples was the capital so yeah. it has always been important for our history and remember the origin of naples greek neapolis a new city in fact i mean we have the surface of Naples, that this is the surface, but if we scratch the surface, if we go under, underground, we see the underground Naples, which is really amazing. This is what I always suggest, visit the underground city, yeah. because it's very, very nice. And Naples, it's a city that, um, I, I got to say, it's one of my favorite cities because it has that urban jungle energy. And the floor plan or the street plan survives from Neapolis days, 500 years before Christ. It's a grid plan with a beautiful long straight street called Spacanapoli. I think that's li literally split Naples. And look at how this 2000, more than 2000 year old street splits the old town. And in that street and on the small streets, this side and that side, we've got all sorts of life in the streets. There's a, there's a, uniquely Neapolitan kind of living called basso living. And I understand even people with lots of money, they like to live, you know, in the action. They like to set up their card table in the streets and sip their wine and, and watch the Vespas go by. Yes, exactly. You know, this is actually um, a kind of convivial moment because all the people living in the basso, they reunited them, themselves, they stay together and they celebrate. I mean, they have lunch together, they have a dinner together. You know, the basso is a typical Neapolitan way of lifestyle. And so is the pizza. And so is the pizza. Remember the pizza, the, especially one type of pizza, the margarita pizza was invented, was created in Naples. The pizzeria still exists. The pizzeria brandy uh, that mm. in the, in the uh, 1865 they made uh, i mean mm. they made the pizza in mm. honor of queen Marguerite of savoy they made the pizza with the italian uh, the, with, uh, with the color of the italian flag i so love we have, it and, and we should remind our friends that are watching right now if you waved the color of the italian flag before unification you could end up in in jail <laughs> yes. you could end up worse than in jail but you had a pizza and the pizza was the flag of Italy. <laughs> yes, yes. Whoa. I mean, red tomatoes, we, white, red, red, white cheese, and uh, basil. Yes, the three ah. colors, simple ingredients again, and the flag of Italy is in that pizza. So. Bon appetito. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And a lot of Americans look at that and they might think, oh, that's a thin crust. And oh, there's not very many ingredients there that's the whole idea it's just it's simple it's honest it's perfect quality and italy is so passionate and brilliant about matching special matching i mean if you've always thought um bruschetto and cantaloupe melone together are good that's kind of a an italian thing isn't it to to mix and match yes sweet and salty and it's just it it works so well when it's done right Exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, and again, uh, uh, we have this big fantasy to mix, you know, the food in the appropriate way. You know, in the past, uh, you would say no cheese on the fish. But now cheese in the Nouvelle Cuisine 
can be added in the, to the fish. So there's so, cre creative matching. And yeah. when it comes to dessert, you have plenty of options. I just love to look at the even the words. I think baba means like uh, soaked in rum. We know Nutella, we know cacao. Tartufo would be super chocolate, I think. Yes. And over on the left, we see something that's maxi. I bet that's maxi good. And, and way in the far corner, barchetto. Barchetta. Barchetto, yes. This is actually a round, a small round, uh, uh, you know, chocolate uh, stuffed with hazelnuts inside with one all ends hazelnut on the top. This is typical of Naples, like the Rambaba, like the Maxi that you can see there with whipped cream and, nice. uh, and fruit. Nice. Oh, boy, oh, boy. And you know, what I'm really impressed by in Italy is that whole risorgimento, the, the unification of Italy movement in the 1860s. Nobody wanted a united Italy. And the Italians did it. It's a thrilling story. And when they finally united, they were proud, but they had to create a proud nation. And there was a huge building spurt. They were laying train tracks like never before. And they were building these grand galleries of iron and, and glass. And uh, you find in Milano, you find in Naples, these beautiful galleries. Uh, what are we looking at here, Tommaso? This is a Galleria Umberto. This is the Galleria Umberto, which is, uh, you know, uh, a kind of a sister construction of the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele in, uh, in Milano. So ah. basically all this kind of structure of this kind of buildings were built soon after the unification. So Umberto the was the second king, is that right? Oh, yes, one of the king, yes, the second king of Italy. So it's yeah. like it's like Naples. It's like Milano has the gallery George Washington, and yes. uh, Naples will have gallery Thomas Jefferson. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> this is the idea. You are right. Great museums in Napoli uh, because Napoli was a cultural capital. In fact, when when Italy was united, uh, there were, uh, Naples was kind of disrespected and felt a little disgruntled because Rome and, and Milano became more powerful. But we got to remember until 1870, Naples was even a bigger cultural force than it is today. Consequently, you have a lot of great museums. Absolutely great museum. Uh, and actually, the museum is in Naples. They have uh, among the most beautiful masterpiece, you know, of, mm. uh, of Italy. This is, for instance, the Collezione Farnese, the Farnese collection. And uh, well, what, what I can say about the next one. This is oh. really amazing, Rick. You know how beautiful this, it is. No, you're right. This is a small church. When I was first going there, Nobody knew about this. It was just, oh, there's this wildly beautiful statue laying there, a, a dead, the, 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 a, a marble sculpture of a dead, uh, a corpse with a mar marble veil carved over his face. Yeah. And of course, it's Jesus with a veil by a guy yeah. named Samartino, I think. Some Yes, San Martino. He is in the Cappella San Severo. As you said, it's a small church, it's a small chapel that from the outside, it does not tell you anything. Nothing. But when you go inside, oh my God, that is really mm. something unbelievable. You could stand there hours to you contemplate this. Mesmerized, contemplating. The man did a beautiful, beautiful accomplishment with that statue. Here we see Naples at night and the uh, skyline with Mount Vesuvius. And the cool thing about that, I think, is it's missing its top. This, I know, not because I'm a great art historian, but just I know when the mountain blew up. This has got to be before 79 AD, right? Exactly. 79 AD was the date that, you know, uh, the area of Naples and Pompeii was devastated. Look how, you, how it was Mount uh, Vesuvio and how it is today. Yes, the, the devastation was really massive. Many, many people lost their life, not because of the lava, but because of the pumice stone, a very high mm -hmm. temperature. And, and these and people is... were buried, weren't they? And then their bodies um, rotted out and they filled the cavity with, with uh, plaster. And now they have a cast of the people that were killed by the eruption. Yes, exactly. This is uh, this was done by the archaeologists uh, in order mm. to understand, uh, you know, the uh, the violence, let's say, of the of the eruption. That's so, a good way to put it, the violence. Um, and then today you walk there with a good guide and you understand the city. It's the best look possible, I would say, yeah. at ancient Rome. You've got beautiful, beautiful mosaics, both at Pompeii at the site and the best treasures are taken away and put in the National Museum in Naples, where you've got a wonderful collection of ancient Roman art, statues, and uh, frescoes. But for a lot of people, Naples, you're, you're ready for a small town. You're ready for a limoncello when you have too much of Naples, because it is intense, I got to say. And if you go an hour south of Naples, you come to Lemoncelloville, I'd say, Sorrento. 
Right, that is that is a beautiful, beautiful town, you know, on the Mediterranean Sea, on the Tyrrhenian Sea. And um, yes, it's it's very nice. It's very quiet. Look at the main drag, the main stretch mm. of Sorrento. This is all pedestrian. This is the passeggiata section and also the shopping area. This is the area where you can find the menu limoncello store. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at the lemons. Oh, that has a perfect quality, the perfect variety to make the best limoncello. That. Here's our TV producer, Simon. He's getting into the lemons as we were making our show there. I want to remind people there's uh, TV shows for all of this. So you can, uh, if you want more information, go to the website, ricksteves.com, go into the TV section and, and you know, settle down and watch some Italy on TV. But you got lemon in the in the sorbetto. You got lemon everywhere you look. And then you head south to this romantic coastline, the Amalfi Coast. And it's just a, a charm bracelet of resorts all on crazy steep cliffs with tiny beaches. This is, uh, of course, the biggest or the most famous and jet city resort, Positano. And it's just delightful to be able to hang out in these resorts uh, if that's what you'd like uh, for part of your vacation. And from the Amalfi Coast you and from Sorrento, you can take a boat just for about an hour out to Capri. And uh, the Roman Emperor would come out here for his escape. And we can too. This has long been a resort hideaway. And you, you land right there and the uh, island is spreading out before you and you can have a beautiful time. You can also ride the chairlift up to the very top of the island, the summit, for a grand view. It's really fun to jump in a boat and, and they for 20 bucks or something, they'll take you all around the island. And that's a very nice tour. Have you done that, Tommaso? Take the boat Many. around? Many times. I mean, it's beautiful not only to see island, uh, the island of Capri in Capri by bus, but also going all around by boat because you see the Faraglioni, uh, you see the Blue Grotto. Of course, this is uh, uh, this is one of the most important attractions of southern part of Italy. I mean, you go in this grotto with the refraction, the reflection of the sun inside. The grotto becomes so blue that look it's at really that. I just love it and the. The, your boatman will sing a little bit to demonstrate the acoustics and then he'll he'll force a little more tip out of you and then he will free you to go back to your bigger boat. Just south of that, we've got more of those wonderful ancient Greek ruins at Paestum. And as I mentioned, these are some of my favorite Greek uh, temples and something that is really an important part of our tour. And by the way, all of this that we've been raving about it's covered on that 13 day uh, tour, isn't it? So uh, we've got a chance to check out the Agra well, the, agri the the business of uh, mozzarella, what's going on here, Tommaso? Yeah, he's, uh, here we have the water buffaloes that are getting massages on their body in <laughs> order to produce the best milk. Because remember, if the buffaloes are treating well, they produce absolutely the best milk. So we get the best mozzarella, we get the best ricotta from the milk, and we get the best yogurt. And we, this is what we can see in our tour. I mean, preparing the mozzarella right in front of us. Oh. It's a great experience. Oh, and, and here, here we have this example that me is so Italian. Simple, the focus on the ingredients. You've got an insalata caprese. You've got the best mozzarella in the world. You've got tomatoes. If I don't know about other people, but I think it's fair to say if you've never had tomatoes outside of the United States, you don't really know what a tomato can taste like. And I grew up eating tomatoes dutifully, uh, you know, because they're healthy. Um, and I got to Italy when I was a kid and I was eating tomatoes like apples. I was just, they were like all of a sudden triple the taste. And when you put that together in an insalata caprese with just a beautiful olive oil and you're right there with the, with the water buffalo just in your memory, it is a beautiful experience. So here you see what we've just done in the best of Italy in 13 days. You could do it on your own or you could take a tour. Uh, you'd start in Rome and you'd get in the bus and go all the way to the East Coast, the Gargano Peninsula, Alboro Bello, Matera, and then over to that Bay of Naples area, the Amalfi Coast that we've talked about for the last few minutes, finishing in Naples. And from there, there's a handy airport in Naples, or you can take the train for a couple hours back to Rome. And as we saw earlier, We've got the best of Sicily flying into Palermo and likely out of Syracuse or Catania on the airport on the eastern side of the island. 
And here you can see with those numbers indicating how many nights you'd sleep in each stop, what we think is the best 11 days that Sicily has to offer. I took the tour myself just to learn and to have some fun. I was blown away by it. I was blown away by the ancient art. I was blown away by the friendly people. And I was blown away by the food. I got to tell you that. So much good food. Remember, when you take a Rick Steves tour, all the group sighting is, sightseeing is included at no extra cost. I think that is so fundamental, so important. You get a small and friendly group of travelers between 24 and 28 people generally. And I say friendly, well, I would say this, we can shape the clientele by the way we advertise our tours. And we shape the clientele in order to have a group of people that have a lot of fun together that we enjoy traveling through Europe with. We have people with the right attitude for a Rick Steves tour. We've got the full-time services of a great guide like Tommaso uh, and uh, also local guides to complement the work of Tommaso. All your group transportation is included. Accommodations in memorable, centrally located hotels. Memorable because they're not as predictable and comfortable as a high-rise international class hotel. They are quirky. Things don't always work. They're characteristic. They're run by fa hardworking families. They're right downtown where you want it to be. They're full of character. All the breakfast, half your dinners, and all the tips are included. I just think it's so great not to be worrying about tips. You know, we tip everybody on our tours the best way, and you are you are, you are their friend. You are at their service, and you have consequently, I think, a great experience. I want to just talk for a minute here about uh, the the way our tour program has been working over the years. We've got, uh, this, is a, this is a big part of our business. I employ 100 people here in Seattle. And every year we organize our tour program. And here you see in the last four or five years, the cyclical nature of our tour business. It's more people traveling in spring and fall. And especially when you're talking about Southern Italy, you know, July and August can be very hot. So you can see we really spike in May and in September when we have more than 100 buses on the road at the same time. I think um, it's uh, interesting to note that the Italy is the lion's share of our travelers. I think a quarter, not the lion's share, but a quarter. Italy uh, punches above its weight that way. Italy is very popular, and that includes South Italy and Sicily. Uh, nearly all of our South Italy tours are sold out for this year, but there's still a lot of seats open on our um, Sicily tours. And if you go to ricksteves.com into the tour section, you can find out more about that. We've been uh, raving about our tours all month. I had this little chart put together so you can kind of see what the story is. This is for 2023 and we're right on target for where we want to be and we expect to be sold out this year. And right now we're giving everything a little bump with our festival and with the discount that we mentioned. But here you can see um, out of the 1200 departures that we've got booked, 500 of them still have seats available. And if you look at each region there, you can see how many departures and how many seats are available today uh, for these tours uh, as we go through our sales season. All the information you need is right at ricksteves.com. Go there, go into the tour corner, and you can learn more. As I mentioned, lots of TV shows. We got 18 shows on Italy out of the well over 100 shows we've produced over the years. $100 off any seat you like to book during our festival. And if you put your name on the list, I just did, just for kicks. I wanted to see how complicated it was. It's easy. It takes about 10 seconds. Uh, you'll get your name in the digital bucket and in the virtual bucket, and we will draw a name from that bucket like we did last Monday, this coming Monday in two days. And uh, who knows? You might win a tour just like uh, Matthew did. Uh, I think that's his name from last Monday. Um, also, I want to remind you tomorrow, we're going to Turkey with Lolly and Yorin. We've got two different uh, guides joining us uh, because we've got two different tours in Turkey. That's tomorrow. And after that, we're talking about ethical travels in a warming world on Monday. France with Steve Smith and Virginie Moray on Tuesday. And I'll be joining Stephen McPhillamy on Wednesday for Ireland and lots more in the next week or so. Our guides are so thankful, as I am, to have such great travelers join us on our tours. If you like what you see in this festival and you want to join us, we would love to have you. All right. Well, that's the that's what we got to share about Sicily. Tommaso, you are fantastic. Thank you so much Grazie for sharing mille. your island, your land, the place where you wear the flag. And I bet Julianne's got some questions for us. Yes. Well, I have to say I went on the Sicily tour in 2019 and it was just unforgettable. I've seen this. I want to go again. I loved it yeah, that much. Me too. <laughs> me too. Yes. 
Well, let's see. Our first question is from Paula and Carol was wondering the same thing. And Tommaso, do you say you are Sicilian first and Italian second or the other way around? No, no, no. First Sicilian, absolutely. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the only problem is that I have a passport where it's written the European Union Republic of Italy. But if I could have, I mean, a Republic of Sicily, that would be better. Yes, our, you know, <laughs> our Sicilianity, let's say being Sicilian for us is fundamental. So Sicilian first, European Union then, and then Italian. Because remember, Italy was done in 1861. Italy was divided into many countries, you know, many republics. And, and Sicily, of course, was and, one of the most remarkable, you know, of it. Tommaso, just briefly, would you say that the European Union is good news for the small national groups that don't have their own country? Absolutely, it is. It is. And remember that we have a lot of benefit from the European Union. European Union is investing a lot of money. Even yeah. in the last 20 years, we had such a big improvement in Sicily was thanks to the money that we received from the European Union. And That's if you think about it, there's always tension between ethnic groups that didn't get their country and they've had to live in another country. Uh, these are called nations without states, I think. Um, yes. There's always tension that way. But for most of my lifetime, there's been news about terrorists and, and separatist movements and everything. But since the European Union has been getting traction on this idea that we need to celebrate and give dignity and freedom to ethnic groups that may be in a bigger political unit, there's no real need for this kind of angry separatism and this violence. And it's a beautiful thing for Europe. And the little languages and the little dialects are more widely spoken now than they were a generation ago. Remember the diversity. This is the winning point of Europe. We are diversity. all diverse. Yeah, I mean Sweden is totally different from Sicily, but we belong to the same union. You know, so, which is amazing. I love it. It's a celebration. It's a celebration. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Julian. <laughs> well, one of the things we celebrated tonight was Italian food and Sicilian food, especially for both of you. What makes Italian food so special? Rick, you or me? <laughs> well, but we're, we'll both go, but I'll, I'll, I know you have to think more because you know more about food than I do, so you have more options. But for me, what makes Italian food special is the ingredients. And, and I'm no fancy food specialist, but I know the ingredients and I know a smart eater in Italy goes with the seasons. You don't just have porcini mushrooms because you always wanted to have porcini mushrooms. If it's on the daily special, the chef is excited about it. They want you to try it. So go with the daily specials, go with the ingredients. And then there's something more than just the ingredients and the taste of the food. There's the ambience and the energy of the place where you're eating it. And when I recommend a restaurant, it's as much the ambience and the vibe and who is the clientele and what's the family vibe of running it? Is it people that are just coming in for a job and they're going to be gone next year? Or is it many generations of the same family that love what they do? And my favorite restaurants are that. And you cannot capture that the same way in the United States. You can have a great restaurant for Italian food in the United States, but it'll never be a great restaurant in Italy. And that's what I just love. Yes, the passion. We put passion. passion. Exactly. What we do is a passion with passion. I mean, sometimes you go in a restaurant, they really don't care about money. They ask you, what's good? This is the main question that they do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes, if this was good or not. And we saw tonight a bit of the different people and cultures that have crossed over Sicily. Tommaso, how has this history helped form Sicilian culture today? And then Rick, how does it feel as a visitor seeing all these cultures kind of brought mm. together? Rick, so Tommaso, you first. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, I'm first, okay. Yeah. Well, the, the, you know, the different, I mean, the different cultures we had opened the Sicilian mind. Because remember, the main word, the most important word today in Sicily is tolerance. Mm. Tolerance, tolerance. I mean, we had tolerance 2,000 years ago. We have tolerance even today. Mm. Remember, Sicily is at the boundary of Europe. Many immigrants today arrive in Sicily. Mm. And they are all welcomed. I mean, we don't send them back. You know, we have some, you know, places called hotspots where we really accept all these people. So it's part of our genetic, it's part of our DNA to be tolerant. 
you know? And unfortunately, the problem in Sicily is that this is not really a multicultural society because many immigrants, they arrive in Sicily, but they don't stay in Sicily because they have the dream of the northern part of Europe. They have the dream to live in Germany, in France, because they still think that in Sicily, our quality of life is not really the best. It is not true. It is the best. So tolerance, it, I think, is the most important word in our culture. Wow. I've got I've got nothing to add. I just am inspired by that celeb a, a society that has lived the reality of this planet, which is diversity, and that has had many uninvited guests coming and going over the centuries. To have a positive and an outward look instead of a fearful and build walls look. We live in a society right now that has a lot of fearful people. Most of the fearful people do not do not own a passport. Their worldview is full of fear and threat because they let other people tell them what it's like out there. And what we do as a company is equip and inspire Americans to get out there and get to know the other 96% of humanity. And for us, Europe is the wading pool for world exploration. And it's a beautiful world out there. You're, you're right now in Argentina. And you're right. making, well, I was talking to you before about Argentina. And uh, it's just like a reminder to me that this world is a huge playground. And I just feel sorry for people that are either too filled with fear or lacking the curiosity to reach out and celebrate it. And that's one great thing about Sicily. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I love the use of the word tolerance too, because it's kind of like the foundation for then acceptance later on. So it's a great thing to Tolerance, have. amen. <laughs> okay, and we have time for just one more question tonight. And... Tomasa, you can answer first and then Rick can wrap things up for us. But if you close your eyes and you picture Italy, what is the image that comes to mind? Uh, wow, what a question. <laughs> yeah, what is the image that comes to my eyes is, uh, uh, is a country. Are we, talking, course, are we talking Italy? Or are we talking Italy? The, yes, Italy. that's right. We could do, how about south of Naples? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do South Italy or, or Sicily or something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. What is the image? You know, the image is, uh, uh, you know, the beautiful monuments that we have, the history, uh, the rich culture that we have. But this is what I really picture in my mind. You know, I go in one place, I see a Greek temple. I go in another place, a Roman monument. Uh, it's really this kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, amazing uh, variety that really amazes me. So this is the image that I have in my mind. You know, I'm in a new world now. Everything is modern, you know? Everything is dating back to 200 years ago. This is the oldest. When I go in Sicily, Southern Italy, that goes back to 3,000, 4,000 years ago. So this mm -hmm. is what my picture is, is picturing. And my, my mind is picturing right now, right now. Mm -hmm. I picture, people who have found their niche, they know why they are here, and then they do that, and they have such great joy in sharing. And I get to be the recipient when I go down there, whether it's somebody carving a figgy di Italy, you know, a cactus uh, fruit. Figgy di India. Figgy di India, or if it's uh, Signora Grammatico with her beautiful, beautiful, uh, you know, uh, 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 cannoli or her beautiful uh, sweets that everybody lines up for in her beautiful shop. And if it's people in the market selling what they sell and what their father and mother sold, there's this that joy of sharing and that wonderful sort of big, big pot of cultural goodies that they can dip into and share. And a lot of Europe has that, obviously, but Sicily really has it good. And Tommaso, we could not do that without great guides. We couldn't, we couldn't get to first base without great guides. And with you guys, we get a home run. <laughs> and I don't even know if you know what a baseball motif is, but you give us a home run, and I'm really thankful for that because with you, we're batting pretty close to a thousand. <laughs> so thanks thank you. to you. Thank you for giving us this great opportunity. You're welcome. I'm glad we're, we're, we're traveling out of this pandemic. We had a good year last year. We're going to have a better year this next year. And I can hardly wait to see you in your homeland in Sicily. Gracias. Julianne, thank you so much for hosting to, or for moderating tonight. And Tommaso, thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, 
just I'll see you uh, as soon as I can and uh, salute. <laughs> salute. <laughs> Buona notte, Tommaso. Buona notte, good night, ciao. Good night, everyone. See you tomorrow as we explore Turkey. <laughs>